My name, hello, my name is Sidra Shrafi and I'm going to read you the first chapter of the last holiday concert. Chapter 1, Palmer Kids. Hart even sat in the front row at the second big assembly of the year. The kids from the last few homerooms hadn't found their seats yet, so there was plenty of noise. Hart turned and looked around the auditorium, sweeping his eyes from left to right. There was still a lot of unfamiliar faces in the crowd, even after two and a half months of school. Then at the last group of kids sat down, Hart saw something that he had never noticed before. What Hart saw was a couple of sixth, sixth grade, almost 400, almost 400 students. The thought that came to him was like a vision, a burst of understanding. And Hart said to himself, we're the Palmer kids now. In the town of Brentbury, kids went to kindergarten first. First, second, third, fourth, and fifth grade at Collins Elementary School or at Newman Elementary School, like two streams tumbling down different sides at the same hill. The, the Collins kids and the Newman kids bubbled along separately for six years. Those two streams of children flowed, to, flowed together for the first time at Palmer Intermediate, where they became a swiveling pool of fifth sixth graders. Palmer Intermediate School contained the sixth grade, the whole sixth grade, and nothing but the sixth grade. Everything fall, every fall, it took a couple of months for the new sixth graders to stop thinking of themselves as Newman kids or Colin kids. By October and November, it became too sick in, sink in. We're the Palmer kids now. So Hart was right on time. Hart even liked being at Parma Intermediate. It was so different from elementary school. Part of that had to do had to do with the building had to do with the building. Everything was bigger, bigger gym, bigger cafeteria, bigger playing fields and bigger auditorium with a full stage. Until about fifteen years ago Palmer had been the junior high school and that's what it felt like. That's how that's also how Palmer was run, like a junior high. All the kids had lockers. They had a homeroom in the morning and then moved from class to class, subject to subject, teacher to teacher for the rest of the day. It was it was a whole new school experience. Making the jump to Palmer into media had had made Hart feel like he was getting but he was finally getting somewhere. One of Hart's favorite things about Palmer School was that his little sister was somewhere else. She was in fourth grade now, two years behind him at Collins Elementary School. Since her first day at kindergarten, Sarah had been like a piece of gum stuck to the bottom of Hart's shoe. She had never missed a chance to tease or embarrass her big, big brother. Plus, Sarah was nosy and huge tattletale, and she had never ex ever accepted the fact that Hart was the most popular boy at Collins Elementary School, which was true. Sarah did, didn't understand why everybody liked his brother so much, but clearly they did. Who who always who always had fifteen guys crowding him. A crowding around his lunch table, his table at lunch. Hart, who got picked first at recess for baseball or dodgeball, even though he wasn't the best player. Hart, who got invited to everybody's birthday party, at least two invitations a week all year long. Same guy. Hart. Sarah knew a different side of Hart even. At school, he was Mr. Cool. At home, he was more like a nerd or maybe a mad scientist. Hart even had his own workbench, which was really just an old corner, old corner desk. It had four skinny legs and one wide, wide drawer that ran across the long side of the triangular top. He spotted the desk at the end of some someone's driveway one Saturday morning on the way from soccer. Mom, quick, stop the car. I need that desk. It's perfect. Honey, that's just junk. You already have a nice sex. But that's one for schoolwork, Mom. I need a place where I can make things and mess around, you know, like for science projects. It'll be right in the corner back of my closet. You won't even know it's there. But his sister knew it was there. When Har wasn't home, she would snoop around and see what kind of goofy stuff he was up to. Like using the electric drill he got in last Christmas to make teeny holes in pennies and bottle caps and acorns and pencils and just about everything else. 
Like using glue to make sculptures out of nails and chunks of rock and rusty nuts and bolts. Like making huge fake boogers out of dried rubber cement and you, or using bits of blue and green bottle glass to make weird like weird little stained glass windows. And how had hard melted all those plastic milk jugs into big lumpy mess? And why did he have so many different kinds of rubber bands, bags and bags of them? Ever since nursery school, school, Sarah had been trailing along two years behind her brother. And her identity was always discovered. Your last name is Evans, right? That was usually the first question. Then Sarah would see the, see the teacher size her up and slowly put it all together. The shape of her face, her blue eyes, the, and Sandy brown hair, her slim build and slightly above average height, just like her brothers. And then the teachers would te then the teacher would get this cheerful look in on her and say, Oh yes, you must be hard little sister, right? And Sarah would not smile. But by second grade she had stopped smiling. And in third grade Sarah had said, Yes, hard is my fantastic fantastic, wonderful, glorious older brother. And I would appreciate if it if it if no one mentioned his name ever again, ever. Sarah's friend would say, "Heart even." Sarah's friend would say, "Heart even is your brother. He's so cool." And Sarah had to explain that based on her observation, Heart was actually a total dweeb. But all of that was in Heart's past. Sarah didn't even ride the same bus with him anymore. At Palmer Intermediate School, school. School, Hart was on his own. Palmer kids, looking around at the, all, all the sixth graders, Hart wrestles with the idea. He couldn't put it into words, but he got a strange feeling like he was looking at himself in the re rear view mirror at the time of a time machine. He saw that these 400 kids were going to travel into the future with him. These were the hot, were, these were the, the, these kids were, would be on his teams in junior high and high school. They go to football games and dances together. They would, they would get their dri driver's license and go out, hang out at Peaks Diner. These were the kids who would graduate from high school with these high school with these Palmer kids. He was looking at his class, really looking at it for the first time. Then Hart Evans, the vi then Hart Evans, the visionary seer of the future, remembered the tangled wad of rubber bands in his pocket. And in a split second, he was in, he was a sixth grade now. Not that Hart had, in, not that Hart had immediate plans to launch a rubber band. No way, not during an assembly, and certainly not in front of, front row. Much too dangerous. Hart hadn't been caught shooting a rubber band in over the two over two years. He had planned to keep it that way. No, the rubber band in his pockets were for for later, after lunch, because after lunch it would be time for courts. And in Hart's opinion, a few well launched rubber bands were just what sixth grade course needs. To find out more, go to your Ogden library and find a book The Last Holiday Concert. Woohoo, what a reader!